Today as part of the Wilderness TV fly tying series, I'm gonna show you how to tie the French nymph. Now in order to tie this fly, we're gonna need the following. So firstly, we're gonna need our black thread, some holographic tinsel, some medium silver wire, a bit of Coq de Leon for the tail fibers, some CDC around the thorax, and finally, a choice of black dubbing. So my hook choice for today is a jig hook. This is a size 14 and I've got a three millimeter tungsten bead on there. So to start this fly, I'm gonna tie a layer of thread down the shank of the hook. So applying tension to the tag end of the thread, I'm literally just gonna hold it above the hook and then with my weaving hand, just work my way down the shank like so. Trying to avoid making contact with the point of the hook so that the thread snaps. Right, there we go. And I just need to trim off the excess there, like so. So now I need to apply my tail fibers. So getting my Coq de Leon, I'm literally just gonna hold it so I can tear off a couple of fibers, like so. Pull away and try not to drop them all. I'm just gonna pinch them all together so I can keep them all at the same length like, like that. So I wanna try and choose the amount that I want to use for my tail length. So in this case, I'm just gonna pinch a short amount because I don't want a massively long tail. And I'm just gonna slide my thumb and index finger in against the shank of the hook and this will allow me to clamp everything down so that it doesn't all pull away. And again, just using my thread, I'm gonna come back up the shank of the hook just to secure it in, like so, just until I meet the bead again. There we go. And I wanna trim off any excess left there. So now for the holographic tinsel. I'm literally gonna trim off about 10 centimeters worth, just so that it's not overly fiddly when I'm trying to tie it into the fly. The easiest trick in the book for this one is actually use the slot of the bead just to push the, uh, the, the tinsel inside and this will allow you the anchor point so that it clamps in from the word go. And again, I'm just gonna work my way back down the bend to the bend of the hook and just enough so I meet where I started off last time. So now I've securely fastened the, the tinsel onto the hook. I now need to wrap it to dress the fly. So now wrapping the red holographic tinsel in, you can start to see that it's creating that red butt. Now, because it's a medium tinsel, I don't need to do too many wraps to create that little hot spot. So I'd say we're about there. And I'm literally now gonna switch hands in order to keep the tension there and to allow me to now anchor that in like so. So again, just gonna trim off my excess. So now I need my silver wire rib. You don't wanna cut this stuff with your scissors because it will soon blunt them. So the idea is it's brittle enough that you can literally just give it a small tug and it will, it will pull apart. So again, I've got about 15 centimeters, plenty to play with there. To trap the wire to stop it from moving around and to allow me to clamp it in with the thread, I'm just gonna use, just trap it in between the bit, slot of the bead again like so. So there we go. I have worked up there, but I can work back down to where my holographic tinsel starts. There we go. So what's unique about this fly is the black thread is actually gonna be used to create our main part of our body, meaning that the fly is very skinny in its profile and can sink quickly in the water column. So now for the profile of the fly. Again, don't go too quickly on this because you actually wanna create a taper so Taking things nice and slowly, we can start to bulk the, the body of the fly up as we get closer to the bead. And it doesn't need to be a big profile, it's literally just enough so that when the fish see it, that, that it looks natural to what they would eat in that river. There we 
go. So from this point, we're now going to tie in our wire rib. Again, I'm actually going to work the opposite way from the way that I'm using the bobbin, purely just so it clamps everything in and stops the fly from looking messy and from falling apart like so. So with nice even turns, I can create a look to my fly. And again, just tying it off there so I can get rid of the excess. Now with the wire again, we don't want to use the scissors to chop it for the for the cause that we don't want to blunt the scissors. So I'm literally just gonna move the wire in circles until it snaps till the friction snaps it. There we go. And now for some CDC. Now on a personal scale. I don't use a lot of the CDC feather, so I'm only going to use a small amount. And the reason for doing this is I don't want to bulk the flying CDC purely because of the fact that when it actually collides with the water, it will get little air bubbles trapped in it and it will slow the sink rate of the fly. So just using the minimal amount that I can use will create plenty of movement, but it's not going to slow down the speed of my fly as it's sinking in the water. So again, using the advantages of the slotted bead, I can just trap that in there again and just give it about five or six turns to secure that in so it's not going to pull out in a hurry. Now if I was to try and tie the CDC around the hook with my thumb and index finger, you can see it's very fiddly so it's actually going to be far too much hassle than I need it to be. So using a pair of these hackle pliers, it's literally going to allow me to clamp the end of the CDC feather and just work around the shank of the hook until I've created enough fluffiness to the fly and tie it off like so. Now using my scissors again I can just come in nice and close and trim off any excess and again I'm just going to brush it back to keep all the fibers out of the way. Now for the final part of the fly we need some dubbing just to spice the fly up a little bit. So if I use one of my chosen color dubbings down here I'm actually going to go for a peacock black dubbing just to give it a bit more glister. Again I'm not going to need a lot so that should do me and I need to tie that into the fly. So using my thumb and index finger literally just gonna twist so that the dubbing bleeds into the thread like so. Push it up fairly close to the bead and then I can just turn my bobbin thread and just to start to, to build that thorax like so. So there we go. I'm happy with that. And now for the very final part of this fly. So it's literally, I just want to finish it off in order to so that the fly, the thread doesn't come loose and untie itself. So with my whip finish tool, I'm just going to catch in the thread like so. Give yourself plenty of thread as well so it's not too fiddly or you're applying too much tension. Again, I'm just going to catch that into the groove there as well. Let them twist so you create your little triangle. Pull in tight and just give it a few turns like so, so three turns. Pull on the bobbin threader and you'll see it traps itself in tight. Pull off of the groove and there we go. So I'm just going to give that a nice pull so it cuts in and it's hit the threads hidden. There we go, that's tight enough. And again, trim off the excess. And there we have it. So this is my take on the French Nymph. In my opinion, this is a must-have fly in your box, both for trout and grayling, in low water conditions and for spooky fish. I hope you found this useful, and thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to our Wilderness TV YouTube channel by clicking here.